So this is the simulation I want you to show. Um, and we have like 30 minutes. And I guess if uh, people have any other questions, I'm happy to answer. But otherwise, I'm just going to use our remaining 30 minutes just to explore different things. This is a kind of fun simulation. I think you have seen some of the recording from this simulation in the lecture slides. The one I remember is, um, what is the one I remember? It's one of the presets. Um, you know what I don't, maybe ellipses? Yeah, yeah, this is the one. Um, so uh, this is the one I used for the uh, lecture slides to illustrate Kepler's, uh, Kepler's, well, I guess Kepler's the second and the third law. So if you're looking at any one of these ellipses, it's illustrating Kepler's second law because this um, thing, as it's getting close, it's moving faster. And as it's getting farther away, it's moving slower. So for any given amount of time, it's covering. So, you know, if you imagine a drawing on, uh, if you imagine extending a line from here to here and looking at the area covered by that extended line, then in an equal amount of time, it covers equal amount of area, equal kind of pizza slice. And, um, and it also illustrates um, Kepler's the third law if you compare orbits of two different ellipses. So um, I, I guess it's a little bit harder to see. Um, yeah, it's harder to see. But I guess uh, if you compare the innermost one with the outermost one, I think just uh, looking at it, I hope you get a sense that this one actually has a faster velocity than the other one does on average. So the, um, the orbit, orbiting objects with a larger orbital radius. So it take, they take longer to orbit and you could uh, chop that up to them having to travel longer distance. That's one of the factors, but you know, Kepler's third law says that what period the, um, the uh, radius cubed is proportional to the period squared. And that means um, um, period is uh, larger than, period increases uh, more than just the proportional. And the way that happens is um, the, the, these are actually moving slower. And I think it's uh, probably the easiest to see it in the initial condition. So in the initial condition, this is the closest one. Its velocity is uh, 151. And the farthest one, its velocity is 37. And um, and a part of this is that this is also at the uh, aphelion, so it's at the slowest part of its motion. But um, even on average, uh, I don't know. Let's say the average its average velocity is double that. It's still slower than the innermost orbiting one. So that you have seen, and um, or maybe not explanation, but you you've seen the video. Um, I think what's uh, useful here is to just. Uh, I don't know, play with some of the presets. I think there are some presets that you will see. I think I use this one, um, Sun and Planet, um, just to kind of talk about that. The, um, the sun also orbits around the planet, or they both orbit around their center of uh, center of gravity or center of mass. Um, in the case of this solar system, the sun is only 20 times as heavy as, as massive as the planet. In case of uh, our solar system, uh, the sun is, I think it's at least a hundred times the mass of Jupiter. And Jupiter is the most massive planet. I think mass of Jupiter alone is more mass than all the other planets combined. And so in our solar system, the sun has just so much mass in it that the the center of mass between sun and Jupiter is still inside the sun. So, um, so this is kind of the exaggerated view of what orbital mechanics in our solar system might look like if the Jupiter were, I don't know, five times more massive. Um, so these are mostly circular orbits. And, um, and I think I, one more thing that I show is, yeah, this one. Uh, this is a fun one. It, um, I think you might have seen it in the lecture slides, but um, let me just play it without further um, further explanation. 
Wait, dude, I think maybe I bring this up in module three. I might not be talking about this in module two. Mm. <laughs> so this is a fun thing that's happening to the comet. And I think I bring this up in module three, not module two. So it, maybe it'll be a bit uh, <laughs> since uh, until you will see it in the lecture. Um, so, well, I, I guess there are some things you can talk about. So I think you can kind of see what's happening here. Um, or let me help you see what's happening here by making the planet much less massive. That's one of the reasons having access to simulation is nice because then you can change some of the parameters. So I made the planet a thousand times as massive as it previously was. Um, then you see that, oh yeah, nothing happens. You got a super elliptical thing that's orbiting the sun, and you got a super circular thing that's uh, orbiting the sun. You can imagine this is Earth, this is one of the comets, and um, yeah, nothing much is happening. Um, oh, you know, there is at least the one thing that's happening that could be worth talking about. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Let me just give this a try. Uh, I'm going to stop it. Uh, so you see how the orbit that this is drawing keeps changing? Um, let me try getting rid of um, body two altogether. So how do I do this? I um, think what I have to do is I need to copy this over. I just want to do a bit of an experiment to see if what I was observing um, happens regularly or not. Um, Got rid of. All right. Okay, I'm gonna use. I hope I have nothing embarrassing here. <laughs> Windows has this feature for uh, like uh, your clipboard history, and sometimes you could have your password here. So I'm just not gonna scroll down too far. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's how where the comment was roughly. Right now I have only the comment, nothing else. Uh, let's see what it does. I haven't actually tried this before. So, okay, here I think it's just uh, um, accumulated errors in simulation. You can kind of see it here. You know how these lines look like uh, parts of a polygon? They look like a short uh, a straight line segment. So I'm gonna just change the simulation a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, I'm gonna make it more accurate. So what it'll do is it'll uh, make the, okay, I didn't, I thought it would just use a more CPU power. I didn't think it would actually slow down the simulation. Um, um, I'll, I'll just let it go about uh, one or two more orbits and then stop, yeah. So, okay, so um, at least on the most accurate mode, this is just the tracing at the same, same orbit over and over. And that's actually what's expected from uh, Newton's law. It's uh, kind of one of the features of the inverse square law forces that uh, these orbits form close the path. The comet keeps uh, tracing out the same elliptical path over and over. So uh, let me go back to the previous preset with the sun, planet, and comet. And we are still on the same accuracy. I'm going to make the planet super light just to see if uh, what I was observing was just to that calculational artifact. Um, it, it, there's a, a good chance that it does that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna let the comet do just two more orbits. So that's one. And yeah, so, so if the planet has a super light mass, then yeah, it has no impact on anything. And in fact, when we work out the orbital mechanics, that's a kind of the, the that's a, our zero order assumption, or that's the starting place. And, um, and the professional astronomers do uh, calculations accounting for gravitational effects of um, other bodies, like Jupiter is the biggest one, and then Earth, and then uh, other stuff. Um, but um, in this system, the sun is, uh, sun basically governs motion of this, uh, it governs motion of planet, and these two are both so, light that they don't affect each other at all. So let me go back to the previous, previous preset here, um, still same accuracy. 
Oh, you know, um, one thing I noticed in the past is when I changed the accuracy, what happened before doesn't happen anymore. Uh, let me just let it run and see. But uh, so the planet is it's, uh, at its previous mass, and I think you can begin to see the effect of the planet on the comet. Here, at their close encounter, you see that the comet slowed down. Can you guess why? <laughs> um, and I think there's supposed to be one more encounter. Yeah, here, comet slows down again. Now the change here is that um, <laughs> apparently with a more accurate uh, calculation, the comet doesn't, uh, its path is not disturbed enough that it crashes, or maybe it'll this time. Well, maybe not, I don't know. Um, I don't normally run this, simul this particular Presidio simulation at this accuracy, but um, so th what this is showing is the gravitational interaction between a planet and a smaller solar system body. It, um, oh, sorry, I see the uh, questions. Uh, one of the questions that can you make it crash? Yeah, so let me just uh, uh, stop, reset. So here it's a uh, part, crash is part of um, calculation of artifact because, uh, oops, wait, that's, this doesn't look right. Let me just, maybe it was midway. Um, so the fact that it crashed before, um, so this actually shows how um, uh, accuracy is important in doing prediction like this. Sometimes you hear in the news, oh, this asteroid has a chance of colliding with Earth and, uh, and uh, after some months with the more precise measurements and oh, it's not gonna collide anymore. And it's really because um, th there are such things as these accumulated errors that are really affected. I think it maybe it was this setting. Let me just uh, reset and try it again. If that doesn't work, I'm just gonna rerun the thing because this particular set of scenarios, it, you know, they really chose the preset carefully, and it's so sensitive that it actually affect, <laughs> affected by how precise. Okay, <laughs> this time it crashed. Okay, um, I see other questions. Is it because the planet blocks the group? So um, what it's showing is. So it's the gravitational pull of the planet on the comet. So let me uh, reset again, and I'm gonna go back to the most sacred because it's gonna be slower. So, um, so you know, gravity can be shielded. <laughs> um, that, that's not a thing. But um, when the planet is massive enough, it has its own gravitational pull. Most of the times it's, so you can actually start to see it here. This comet isn't exactly tracing its uh, previous orbit. And that is because of the gravitational pull of the planet. This uh, gravitational pull of the planet makes it so that uh, this is not a central force problem. The gravitational pull of the sun isn't the only thing that matters. So the, the whole mathematical theorem that said that the path should be closed orbit, that's not the case anymore. And um, that's why this path is slightly different. And when they come closer, now, when the planet does a, closer pass by, like this is how close they are. That's where the, the inverse square law comes into effect. The pull of the planet here as compared to the pull when it was here, based on the distance, there should be like uh, 25, 30 times what it was here. So, um, so right now the comet is kind of moving away. So as the planet is pulling it, so that's why it's slowing down. If the positions were slightly changed, then the comet will be actually speeding up. And in fact, the, I think one of the preset is slingshot. Let me, I can show you the slingshot. So, so that's what's happening in this particular encounter. In that close encounter, the planet happened to be behind the comet, so it slowed it down. Um, and, um, and I think uh, in module three, we will briefly mention something called the precession of Mercury. And, um, that also relates to this where if uh, there are other gravitationally active bodies beyond just the sun, some of these orbits won't be close to um, close to loops. So that's what precession of Mercury refers to. But that's module three, you'll get to that. Uh, let me just, uh, let me see the questions here. Um, uh, yeah, the last question, um, let me defer that until later. Um, I don't want to get too much into physics <laughs> because, um, how do I put it? Um, this is something that we would pay much more attention to in physics for a 
because uh, part of this is um, uh, this is a training that a physics major would go through or engineering major would go through, being very careful in use of <laughs> language and concepts. Uh, like acceleration and gravity are two different things. And here, really, what you have to do is you have to do a force analysis. And it, in physics 4A, we spend like four weeks just doing nothing but just that. We obviously don't have time for that in this class, but we do cover um, elements of what we can in module two. So I would encourage you to take a look at that and um, anything else we can bring that back in a future session. Let me end with a, a slingshot because I saw, yeah, slingshot preset. So I haven't seen this before. I hope. Uh, Oh, you know, what? let me just restart this because I don't know how sensitive it is to the accuracy setting. I'm just going to open this again so that it just resets everything, including my change of accuracy. And then um, let me go back to the slingshot preset. Um, I haven't run this before. I don't know what it'll do. Let's just run it and see what it does. And I can comment on <laughs> whatever it does. Ah. Yeah, so it slingshot it away, <laughs> and I can uh, let me just. Uh, I think let it might still happen at lower uh, or slower speeds. So let me just try that, and if it happens again, I will um, stop it at the right point and then kind of tell you what's going on. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a good enough. Okay, so. Uh, so, you know, you have two things that are orbiting, this thing that's in, in the inner orbit and this thing that's on the outer orbit. The, um, the cyan colored one, it's a very, has a very small mass. So it's a, what we might call test mass. So it, um, it reacts to gravitational pull of the other object around it, but it itself one uh, exerts a significant amount of gravitational pull on anything else. Um, this simulates a planet, a big planet like Jupiter, for example. So, and this is uh, large enough that it'll have some gravitational pull compared to the star, it's 20 times less massive. So, but it'll, um, it'll exert that kind of force. So, so when it's farther away, it does have some impact. You can see that in that it's orbit, it's not closing on itself. It's orbit is kind of different each time because of the pull of this planet. Um, where it's important when, is when the smaller body is doing closer flyby. And that's where you have to watch carefully. Okay, here, as the, um, uh, as the spacecraft is doing a closer flyby of planet, the, the direction of the velocity, uh, can I show, I can't see, uh, direction of the velocity of the spacecraft is towards the planet. And that means the pull of the planet is, uh, it's uh, speeding up this uh, spacecraft. And you see that in the simulation, it's sped up. So it's beginning to get pulled uh, farther away from the sun. Start. And then when it's on this side, now, um, now um, so th this planet is pulling the spacecraft a little bit to the left, um, but it, but that pull is kind of more perpendicular to its direction of velocity than, um, than directly backward. So that pull will uh, curve this, uh, curve the path a little bit, but it doesn't do much to slow down. Now, when it's on this side, it's now, this is where it could begin to slow it down. But at this point, the spacecraft is kind of getting far enough away that it's not slowing down enough. And this kind of orbital mechanic, it's quite sensitive to initial conditions and how you arrange it. So when NASA plans a, a space craft missions like the Voyager mission, which used this gravitational slingshot, or I think they call it gravity assist to, um, to enable the spacecrafts to move faster than they could have or under their own propulsion alone. And it, you know, somebody sat down, do all these calculations by hand in the 60s, 70s <laughs> and figured this out. And it, it's, uh, um, you change these conditions a little bit and it, changes quite a bit. So let me just uh, end with uh, the demonstration of change. I haven't done this before, so I don't know what kind of impact of this change you will have. Let me just change the velocity a little bit. I am going to make this velocity um, maybe 10% um, less. So subtract eight from here. 
So 75. So I just changed the initial conditions a little bit, not that much. Let's see what happens. Um, it could still have to do the exact same thing. It could do something entirely different. We'll see. Yeah, I guess it did more or less the same thing. Ah, there you go. <laughs> so, uh, so this is the kind of the work where precision really matters. Um, so, so yeah, it, this is fun simulation. I encourage you to kind of try it out yourself. That's kind of why I wanted to demonstrate it. Um, there's a lot more that we are not quite covering. Um, <laughs> it's all there, um, double, double. Um, some of the things that you would never see in real life because before something like this could happen. Oh, you know what? This actually could happen. I, uh, people have observed like um, not just the binary stars, but um, like uh, triple stars where two of them are in binary system. So I think it is actually, is actually not all that um, unrealistic. Um, and uh, something like this, uh, which is kind of more of what you see with the Earth and Moon. Uh, so this is the Moon orbiting around Earth, and this is Earth orbiting around the Sun. 